which Dynamics Cloud ERP is right for me. Now, some of you are running NAV or AX, and you know which one is right. Some of you may say, hey, I want to look at the other one, and I wonder if I am on the right one. And we get this question quite a bit. And being one of the few partners that does both products, we're in a good position to take you through the pros and cons and feature differences between both products and help you decide on what is the best strategic fit for your business long term. So the first product that many of us know and love is Dynamics 365 Business Central. That's based on the NAV product. So it's the old NAV or Navision code base that's been upgraded into the cloud, into a multi-tenant architecture. It's the small to mid-sized business offering. The next one is Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain. There's also a commerce or retail component in there. And that's based on the AX product. And it's a mid-sized enterprise offering. So some very large companies use the AX product, but also some mid-sized ones that might be 50 to 100 million in revenue are using that product as well because it may have some key functional capabilities that they need. We're going to step through the differences between these two applications, mainly from a functionality standpoint, and try to shed some more light there. And we're happy to delve into this detail with any of you one-on-one -on -one if you would like. So first is within financials and core functionality. Both systems are known for being some of the best accounting systems on the market. Everybody uses the accounting, so Microsoft does a good job there. There's just a few differences here. What I have in this slide of ISV means that this functionality is typically delivered through a third-party ISV solution. But you'll see GL, AR, and AP are all included, and there's not a lot of differences between the two applications there. They both do the job for most customers. Budgeting is fairly basic and business central. It's very robust and detailed within the finance application. The ability to manage and maintain your bank accounts is included. ACH and positive pay is included in Business Central, but it's typically driven by an ISV by the name of SK Software in the finance world. Credit card processing can be an add-on between both. Fixed assets is included in both. But if you want to do what they call true asset management, like maintaining assets and setting up schedules and having mobile apps to go around and check on them and maintain them and all that type of thing, that's more of what we call enterprise asset management. There's a number of good ISVs for that within Business Central. And then finance has that functionality included. One thing I want to mention is ISVs are not bad things. They're very good at what they do, and they're typically very efficient at, at installing and very detailed at delivering a certain piece of functionality that you need. So we don't want customers to shy away from implementing one system or another just because an ISV is required, but rather factor that into the overall business process in the decision that they're making. Next is manufacturing and warehousing. So this is the one that we spend the most time on with our customer base, which happens to be mostly distribution and manufacturing companies. So the biggest factor that we talk about all the time is warehouse management with mobile barcode scanning or device support. There's some great business central ISVs for that that, again, are very efficient to install and do the job. But finance supply chain has a very robust best of breed warehouse management system that's just embedded and included with the system. So the way we normally help our customers make that decision is if the business central ISVs aren't strong enough for them and they're going out and looking at a separate warehouse management system and then building an integration to business central, if they're thinking about that, then we'll say, hey, that might be a good time for you to look at finance and supply chain because the warehouse management functionality is included and you won't have to build that integration. So that's a common decision that we help our customers with. Next is discrete manufacturing. That is having a discrete set of parts and a bill of materials and routing. That's included in both systems. Finance and supply chain have some more bells and whistles, but both systems do a good job of discrete manufacturing. But the next two is where it starts to differ a little bit. So process manufacturing, if you're blending chemicals and you have co-products and byproducts or beverages and that type of thing, that's where Business Central, you would typically buy a vertical or an ISV solution for that. You wouldn't go with the base product, but with finance and supply chain, it's included. Same with lean manufacturing. 
Do you want to set up Kanbans and work streams and all that lean stuff? That's all included in the finance and supply chain product, but it's typically driven by an ISV or even some basic customizations within the business central product. Shop floor control, there's great ISVs for that in business central. So most companies wouldn't choose finance and supply chain over business central just because of the shop floor control needs. There is some shop floor control included with finance and supply chain, as I put here, but many companies still choose the separate ISV for that because a lot of times it's industry specific or they just have a certain workflow that they're looking for. Project accounting and job costing is included in both. Transportation management is an ISV with the business central, but it's included in finance and supply chain. Quality management, same thing. When you start stacking up needing four, five, six of these things, then it might be worth looking at finance and supply chain over business central. And then a configurator, that's included with finance and supply chain, but it's another one where people often choose a separate best of breed. The Microsoft Dynamics configurator is just not as easy to use as some of the third-party options out there. Next is project-based businesses, so companies that are delivering projects and services. Both systems have a job costing module, the ability to assign resources to a job and cost it. But when it comes down to actually managing that project, finance and supply chain has some more capabilities. It's got the integration with Microsoft Project. You can pull up a plan and modify it in project and save it back to the application. It's also a key part of Microsoft's new project operations system that allows you to use Microsoft's CRM projects application in conjunction with the financials application. And that's Microsoft's future state for larger projects and services companies. Within Business Central, there are great ISVs for helping us deliver this for smaller to mid-size project-based companies. Retail and commerce, this would really be driven by your size. Some of the largest retailers and consumer brands use the finance and supply chain commerce product, but many, many small to mid-sized retailers use Business Central with its key retail ISDs. That's included out of the box in the finance and supply chain and commerce product, but Business Central has great ISDs there. One thing also that we run into, though, is sometimes there are companies, maybe a distribution company, but they need some advanced promotional pricing capabilities. We'll often use that functionality that was written for the retail module in those wholesale sales orders to give the customers more flexibility in pricing. So there is some advantages to the finance and supply chain product for having a little more functionality there. Some of that retail promotions functionality can be used in other modules in the system. Next is system platform and scalability. And this is really limited to the cloud versions of these products. They're both available on-prem, and then you control your own destiny in terms of how big you want the servers to be. But almost every single one of our implementations has been a cloud deployment. Business Central is designed for up to 250 users, but it can go higher depending upon the type of users you have and what they're doing in the system. So that's why there's an asterisk there. It just really depends on how complex or how heavy those users are hitting the system. Finance and supply chain, I don't want to say unlimited, but it can handle tens of thousands of users or more. Then sales lines process per day. Business Central is typically in the tens of thousands. If you're doing more than 20 or 25,000 order lines posting a day, it might be worth talking about finance and supply chain product. But that's really the main metric for evaluating the database performance that we use. So if you have 10,000 orders with two lines in every order, then that's 20,000 sales lines. 5,000 orders with three lines would be 15,000. So it's a pretty simple metric, and that's really what helps us drive the sizing of the system. The next thing is, what is your global presence like? How many countries are you in, and how do you interact across those countries? Finance and supply chain has the ability to set up a global chart of accounts, a global customer and vendor master. So for example, when you set up a customer, then you pick which companies worldwide you want to be able to use that customer in. And it handles all the intercompany transactions and the currency translations and everything very much automatically. 
Business Central has what we call a more basic intercompany sales and purchasing. As you can see here, it does do intercompany sales and purchasing, but you have to manually maintain customers, vendors, items across all those different entities. So one of the first things that we have talked to is what are your global expansion plans? How many countries do you plan to be in? And then see what makes sense. But with that being said, Business Central is still very popular with global companies. Many of our Business Central customers have deployed it in four and five countries, and they love having those separate instances and how easy it is to learn and maintain. But if you want that one instance, really robust global system, that's going to take you straight into the finance and supply chain system. And then there's a few more integrations with the CRM stack of applications that are included in finance and supply chain, but not within the Business Central application. We have to do that through a third-party tool. Field service has been a very popular application for our customers in the last year or two. We've deployed it with both Business Central and with finance and supply chain. But Microsoft builds the integration. It's very robust for the finance and supply chain platform. With Business Central, we use a third-party integration tool, and that works well, too. And then sales, it's included with the Business Central application, but it's a fairly basic integration. With finance and supply chain, it's much more robust and much more flexible. Those slides just took us through area by area what some of the differences are between the two applications. Next, we're going to get into, once I look through that list, how do I make a decision? Here's what we help you with. How many ISVs will I need? Two or three, no big deal. Am I at eight to ten? If I'm at seven or eight ISVs, they're all handled in Business Central, and they're all out of the box with finance and supply chain, then that's a pretty strong indicator that maybe I want to look at getting rid of several of those ISVs and going with a more standard system. The next is how many custom extensions will I need? Business Central, put this in here, it's easier and faster to customize. So if you have really unique business process and it's not out of the box with any ERP and you need a lot of customization and that's your secret sauce, then Business Central might be the answer for you there. Whereas the finance and supply chain management has more robust functionality, there's a lot more configuration involved and time understanding how to use that base functionality, but there's always less customization with that product because it has more features out of the box. If you do go to customize it, it's going to take longer to customize it because of the complexity of the application. What is my peak scalability? What is my peak order volume if I have those big Black Friday type moments and I'm concerned that one, that the business central platform can't handle it, then maybe I look at finance and supply chain management for that reason. The next is not just your current state, but what functionality do I plan to add over the next several years? We've had some customers that have been happy with Business Central in their current state, but then over the years, they start adding shop floor control. They start adding more mobile WMS capabilities. As their business matures, you want to make sure that you have a plan for addressing those, whether it's Business Central ISVs or customizations, or whether it makes more sense to go with the finance supply chain management product and grow into it. So these are some of the soft factors that will help you with that decision. And then do I plan to use CRM applications and in what capacity? We're seeing a lot more customers, like I said, deploy sales, customer service, field service. And in some cases, they've modified their old ERP systems to do some of that work, especially around customer service or those types of things. So offboarding some of that workload from your ERP into the CRM can change your requirements a little bit for the ERP. In some cases, it might say, hey, I have actually have simpler ERP requirements because I'm going to use CRM more. And in other cases, you might want to take advantage of some of that out-of-the-box integration that the finance and supply chain management product has.